We're now in the month of August, which we all have to admit is the month where the least excitement comes from in the NBA world. The NBA draft is a distant memory, free agency hype has died down besides a small handful of guys still being available, and the NBA Summer League is also over, so we don't even have anything to watch. With all of that being said though, trade season never stops, and that's exactly what Bleacher Report aimed to hone in on in one of their recent articles. In this article, they proposed five trades that they believe can and will still happen before the new season begins, some of which are huge deals that are league changing, so as always I'll go through each one, analyzing whether or not they're realistic, why or why not the teams involved would want to do it, and who benefits the most from it if it were to go down. Before we start though, it turns out a good amount of you watching aren't even subscribed to the channel, so if you enjoy the content, consider hitting the subscribe button, as not only does it help out a ton, but I'd also very much appreciate it. Now with that being said, let's begin. The first trade from the article we'll be taking a look at is between the Miami Heat and the Toronto Raptors, and in it the Heat acquire Pascal Siakam and Otto Porter Jr. for Tyler Hero, Duncan Robinson, Nikola Jovic, two first round picks, and a pick swap. The concept behind this first proposal is for if the Trailblazers don't back down from their hardball stance that they have regarding dealing Damian Lillard, and the Heat need to pivot to a backup plan. Lillard's price tag has been set very high, as it should be because he's one of the best players in the NBA on a long-term contract, and the reason that no deal has happened yet is because the Blazers don't value the Heat's offer very much. The Heat package in this offer includes most of what the Heat are ready to put on the table, and while it's not the greatest offer for someone of Lillard's stature, it actually is a really good offer for a guy like Siakam, who is probably a tier down in the star player scale. Siakam is a multiple time all-star and NBA champion who loves to get out and push the pace in transition and he competes hard both offensively and defensively, so honestly he would be a fantastic fit in Miami sliding in alongside Bam Adebayo in the front court. The Heat's front court depth has been a huge issue over the last few years, so not only does this address an area of need, but it also gives them another source of shot creation with Siakam coming off of a season scoring about 24 points per game, alongside his 8 rebounds and 6 assists. The Raptors seem ready to rebuild, so if they were to commit to that path, then acquiring a young scorer in Tyler Hero along with this bevy of draft cap would be a very ideal return, and for the Heat, I believe they would be able to convince Siakam to re-sign when he hits free agency next summer because it's going to be hard to say no to consistent contention in a well-run organization with the best coach in basketball, so it really is a win-win. The next proposal from the article we'll be taking a look at is between the Philadelphia 76ers and the Los Angeles Clippers, and in it the Clippers receive James Harden and Furkan Korkmaz in exchange for Nicholas Batum, Norman Powell, Terrence Mann, and Amir Coffey. Like the Lillard saga, the other big name star player who finds himself in the middle of a huge trade dilemma is James Harden, and the Clippers are the one team that seem to be engaging the 76ers for him. Harden entered this offseason with the potential to hit free agency, and he fully planned on seeking out the best offer available to him, but when no teams actually came forward offering him a max contract, the Sixers followed suit not offering him a max, and that's when his relationship with the team soured, so that leads us to where we are now. The Sixers, according to everything I've read on the situation, seem to be fully focused on one of two options. One option is trading Harden for a package that includes a player or players that can help them remain in contention, or option two, where if the first option is not possible, they then look to maintain as much cap flexibility as possible going into next summer's offseason. As things currently stand, Joel Embiid is literally the only player with a guaranteed contract after this upcoming season, so they'll have a ton of money to spend to build around him. This trade offer in the article falls under option one though, where the players Philly is getting back I do believe can help them win. 
Norman Powell is one of the best sixth men in the league, scoring a highly efficient 17 points off the bench, and Terrence Mann is an outstanding two-way role player who defends hard on the perimeter and has shown he can come through in big moments in the playoffs without needing the ball in his hands to be impactful. The issue here, though, is that the Clippers have yet to offer either of those two players in trade talks. I think if the Clippers do cave and include them, then this deal could get done. But if not, then the Sixers will be sticking with option two, regardless of how James Harden feels about it. The next proposal we'll be taking a look at from the article is between the Indiana Pacers and the Toronto Raptors, where the Pacers acquire OG Ananobi in exchange for Benedict Matherin, TJ McConnell, a first round pick, and a pick swap. Clearly, the Raptors have a lot to sort out before the season begins, with this being their second inclusion in these trade proposals, and OG Ananobi's future is also very much up in the air. He's also going into the last year of his current contract, unsure if he's a part of the Raptors' long-term plans, and with his top-tier perimeter defense and his efficient three-point shooting, he's definitely someone that would have plenty of interest on the trade market. The Pacers are an interesting landing spot for him because they're a relatively young team, but prior to injuries happening, they were in the playoff hunt last year, and this could be a breakout season for them, especially if Ananobi was on board to solidify their starting lineup even further. I love Ananobi's fit alongside guys like Tyrese Halliburton and Miles Turner, but the reason I don't like this trade at all, which I have a feeling is the reason why Pacers fans would also not like this trade very much, is because including Benedict Matherin in the offer is a massive overpay. Matherin just finished an outstanding rookie season, where he showed flashes as a scorer that lead many to believe he could be a great two-guard one day. Hell, he very well could end up being a better player than Ananobi one day. That's how high his ceiling is. With Ananobi on an expiring contract, then the Raptors should be grateful if they receive a package with first-round draft capital and a few players to round out the offer, but I just don't think it's worth it at all to give up on a rising young scoring talent like Matherin. Ananobi would help in the short term for the Pacers, but not nearly enough to justify the long-term sacrifice. And finally, the last offer we'll be looking at from the article is between the Dallas Mavericks and the Atlanta Hawks, and in it the Mavericks acquire Clint Capella in exchange for Tim Hardaway Jr., Josh Green, and a second round pick. The Mavericks have done a lot of good this offseason to bounce back after an incredibly disappointing year that was capped off by missing the playoffs. This includes bolstering their front court, adding players like Grant Williams, Rashawn Holmes, and draft pick Derek Lively to the mix, but they could still use a veteran rim protector to anchor their defense, and that's why they've been so heavily connected to Clint Capella. I have to admit that I think Capella would be a terrific fit in the middle for Dallas, but it's also hard for me to fully get on board with giving up Josh Green to do it. Green finally got the opportunity to be a regular member of the team's rotation last year and was actually one of their few bright spots alongside Luka Doncic. He was one of the few guys playing good defense, he was moving well off the ball with good chemistry with Luka, and he knocked down 40% of his threes. He's also still just 22 years old, with so much more room to improve, while Capella is at the other end of the spectrum, starting to slow down, hitting 30 years old. If they could maybe replace Green with Maxi Kleber in the offer, that would be much more ideal, but obviously the Hawks then may be less inclined to go through with it. So honestly, this is a trade that's close, but not quite good enough for both sides to get through in my opinion. And with that being said, that's all I have for you today. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and comment down below what you think about these proposed trades. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.